Okay, well, welcome and uh, good morning. So my name is Dave Auschelow. I'm the Liu Family Professor here at the Pritzker School of Molecular Engineering and the director of QNEXT, one of the DOE National Quantum Information Science Research Centers, as well as the Chicago Quantum Exchange. So in a remarkably short period of time, the Pritzker School of Molecular Engineering did something quite extraordinary here at the University of Chicago. It built the first quantum engineering program in the United States, attracting more than a dozen faculty from all over the world in quantum engineering, in sensing, computing, and communication. So all of us are really fortunate to be at the birth of what's really a new discipline with rapidly emerging societal impacts. And I think most of you know that, spanning finance, to medicine, to the environment, to information sciences, and of course, the fields of science and engineering themselves. But by building partnerships with industry, our national labs, and universities both nearby and, in fact, around the world, and by launching the Chicago Quantum Exchange, an intellectual hub for research and development of quantum technology, we've established the University of Chicago and the Chicagoland area overall as a leader in quantum science and technology. So, of course, the heart of quantum engineering here at the PME are our faculty and our students, as well as our staff who are all working together on quantum information science that aims to develop more sensitive sensors, faster, admittedly specialized computers, and more secure modes of communication. But of course, what's arguably the most exciting about everything in this field is we don't actually know where or even when the most impactful applications will appear, but they will, and of course, of that we're quite sure. So if you'll indulge me for just a moment, you know, in a historical perspective, what started here at the PME in 2013 as a very small group comprising my colleagues Julia Gali, Andrew Cleland, and now myself is so much larger. We have faculty members such as Ashish Cleric, Alex Hai, Tian Zhang, Peter Maurer, and Hannes Bernin, who are developing methods to improve the sensitivity of quantum sensors and identify new platforms for qubits. We have Suprati Guha, Jiwoon Park, and Shulong Yang pushing the limits of quantum materials that could be used for sensing or computing, and in fact, literally building these materials atom by atom to develop new classes of quantum systems with state-of-the-art synthesis techniques. And we continue to add to this quantum area with Laura Gagliardia, Dave Schuster, John Simon, as well as our most recent addition, of course, Paul Alavasados. For those of you who don't know, Paul, of course, is our president, new president of the University of Chicago. So with these and many more leaders in the field, we created a really collaborative and integrated team here at the PME that skillfully bridges both theory and experiment to try and advance this field. Now, at the end of the day, the success of these efforts really can be seen in our collective research accomplishments, which include new quantum communication techniques, demonstrations of quantum entanglement, world record times for maintaining quantum coherence in semiconductors and molecules, unprecedented control of atomic qubits and arrays, and nuclear memories, and emerging technologies to probe biological systems at unprecedented scales. More and more interesting science and technologies are unfolding literally weekly in this discipline. And much of this, of course, has been guided by major advances in quantum theory of molecules and materials that have been accelerated by faculty in the PME. So many of these efforts couldn't have been done without our collaborations, of course, and our collaborators, and coordination with Argonne National Laboratory and Fermi National Accelerator Laboratory. At Argonne, for example, not only do we have world-class atomic scale materials characterization facilities, but also leading computing capabilities and one of the leading national theory centers, MICOM, to help drive our research efforts. Now, from programs like Teach Quantum, which give public school teachers the tools to bring quantum information science to their classrooms, to the Quantum Information Science and Engineering Network, which develops a national community of graduate students who work collaboratively and in partnership with industry and national labs for their PhDs, to certificate programs for advanced professionals to retool them with the right skills to work effectively in their current environments. In all of these activities, the PME community has played a key part in an effort to ensure that our nation trains enough quantum scientists and quantum-ready engineers to work in industry universities, and the federal government. But I'd argue that one of the most important and game-changing developments has actually come from you. It's come from our students, creating and launching the Open Quantum Initiative, a group of researchers, 
educators and leaders amongst the Chicago Quantum Exchange that champions the values of diversion, diversity, excuse me, equity, and inclusion in quantum science. You know, it's a way to reach deeper and more broadly into a new discipline that's been done before. And it's extraordinary and fantastic to see so many people excited and engaged in this effort. As a home at the Chicago Quantum Exchange, the PMA also takes a lead in a bold effort to make Chicago a leader, a regional leader and a national leader in the development of quantum technologies and their commercialization with connection to industry and broader applications. So one thing, you know, I really want to reiterate, this effort is much larger than any one organization can address on its own. We can't do this on our own. But in collaboration with Argonne, Fermilab, the University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign, the University of Wisconsin-Madison, Northwestern University, and more than two dozen industry partners, our institutions are building a network of quantum innovation across the Chicago area and beyond. And this, of course, includes quite literally the quantum network that's been developed here in the Chicago region, a network exchanging quantum information both through the suburbs of Chicago, all the way from Argonne to the University of Chicago, and to Hyde Park, nearly a 100-mile network that will be launched in its entirety at the end of this year. So this highly collaborative and highly integrated approach to research has led to Chicago and Illinois winning national competitions to receive four major national centers of research for quantum information science and engineering. Two of the nation's five Department of Energy quantum information science centers are here in the Chicago area, QNEX at Argonne and the Superconducting Quantum Materials and Systems Center at Fermilab. And now, two of the five National Science Foundation Quantum Leap Challenge Institutes are here in Illinois, HCAN centered at the University of Illinois Champaign with the University of Chicago and University of Wisconsin, and CUBE centered here at the University of Chicago just announced a week ago. A quite unique center at the intersection of quantum information, biology, and chemistry, along with medicine. As part of this goal to create a local quantum economy, this summer, the Chicago Quantum Exchange and UChicago's Polsky Center, along with partners of Argonne, UIUC and P33 launched Duality, the first U.S. startup accelerator focused on quantum technologies. Duality recently announced its first cohort of six startup companies, actually from around the world, which represents the breadth of quantum information from materials engineering to advanced computation to teaching. And there's much, much more to come in this space in the coming year. It's an incredibly exciting time to be part of the quantum information science effort here at the PME and to celebrate with all of you our milestones and achievements. So what are we doing this morning? For some of us, it's still a little early. We doing okay with time? Okay, are we finding this interesting? Okay, so, so uh, this morning, we're gonna hear from leaders in government, industry, and some of our alumni and recent graduates, several of you, several of you that I see here in the audience. And this is gonna include this discussion among leaders from across the quantum information science community. A fireside chat with some leaders in the quantum communications field and insights from early career professionals. We hope that you find these discussions engaging and illuminating, and that you participate with questions both during the sessions, during the breaks, and afterwards. Finally, I really want to say that the reason we're all here today is because of you. Without extraordinary students and staff that were willing to take a pretty big leap of faith a few years ago and join us in this endeavor, we wouldn't be here today. I mean, who would have thought 10 years ago that the University of Chicago would have one of the leading programs in molecular engineering and quantum engineering in the United States, if not the world? So thank you very much again for coming today, both in person and of course virtually. We look forward to what the next 10 years of quantum information are gonna do here at the PMA.